Alright folks, thought it was about time for a little review of my BMW F850 GS which is our late 2018 model So here she is I've just covered just under 2,000 miles on this since getting it about three months back and it's in really awesome condition it's had about three owners I think before myself but very well cared for full service history as well 90% by BMW won by a dealer who had it as a trade in I guess then they done a service on it and stamped the book within a couple of hundred miles of BMW previously just doing it so this bike has more options than I've ever had in any bike previously to this it's also got Akrapovich exhaust it's got a centre stand it's got electronic adjustable suspension which adjusts the height as well actually from the different modes It's got handguards, which I've never had before, which make a difference at high speeds more than anything else. So I shall jump back on the bike in a more and tell you what I think of it. So far there's only actually one thing I can think of that I don't like. and. It's the side stand. It's it's very upright. I don't know if you can see it more from that angle. And the bike tends to tends to sit very level <laughs> when parked. So I'm always having to look for somewhere where there's a little dip to park it. So other than the side stand being too upright or making the bike too upright when it's on or engaged the heated grips are rubbish on them they've got three settings and compared to the previous Oxford grips I've fitted on every bike so far they are pretty weak if I'm honest So let's get straight down to it. Would I recommend one of these? Definitely. It is an amazing bike. Very versatile. Definitely fast enough. It's quite a heavy lump. But it would be in an 853cc motorcycle. It's fine once you're moving it. I find it particularly easy enough to slow, manu slow speed manoeuvre it's very manoeuvrable there was a time there quite recently I was off road up a trail got to the end it was only really wet grass to turn and I didn't want to take it onto the wet grass on a mountain top I managed to spin it round on its stand, on its uh, side stand 
just like I did my little bikes in the past not as easily but still doable it's only a couple of hundred kilos it's not a couple of ton <laughs> been out a few long day rides on this I've even tried to go camping on it I must have been in the saddle for around 7 or 8 hours that day and not a problem other than the seat being a little uncomfortable it's ok if I get out for a couple of hours even 3 or 4 hours but I found if you're going further afield, nights away and stuff like that I will definitely be using my comfort saddle comfort seat as it's way more comfortable I started off with the comfort seat then I rode with the regular seat for a while and that's me done around 800 miles I think with uh, like maybe closer to a thousand miles with the uh, low seat on not the extra low seat just the low seat and I think if I went straight from the comfort seat to the low seat I would have found it more uncomfortable instantly <laughs> the day that I was out and we went on the ferries over to the Isle of Butte my ass was sore for about a week after that day really good uh, more so in twisty roads like these it just seems to tip in is the term I think like lean into the corners quite effortlessly and the riding modes on it are quite fun I've tried them all out now I'm currently in dynamic which is the sportier, leaner of the rest you've also got road which raises the sus suspension very slightly when you're on dynamic rain mode as well or when the road conditions are a bit moist oh no, there he is, that inward and it's also got Endure, is it enduro or endurance? Let's find out. Oh, here we go, I need fuel. <laughs> enduro, it's also got enduro mode. For if you want to take it off the road a bit and maybe do some trails, tracks. again I've used as well it actually raises the suspension very slightly by an inch or so giving you that little bit more ground clearance but if you're short legged like me you need to remember to flick it back to the road before you're stopping ideally <laughs> in case you're in a can't get the feet down situations You know, it's a bike for all situations, in my experience. On the motorway, it's really good as well. You've got quite a bit of wind protection. Well, compared to the majority of naked bikes I've had in the past, you've got quite a lot up front here. The screen, this is the second screen I've had on it. 
only complaint is it gives me a little bit of a whistle off my lid or in my lid and when I changed from the slightly taller wider screen to this narrower shorter one it didn't make any difference whatsoever it still does the exact same thing so that's a not even a negative in my opinion the screen on something like this is it's more cosmetic Ain't no slouch. It's got 95 horsepower. More than you'll ever need. I've thought that before about previous bikes. Even the 47 horsepower of the CB500F. I said the same. It's more than you'll ever need. And it really is. Uh, so this is pretty much double what the 500 had. And in comparison, is it twice the bike? In stature, <laughs> it does seem that way. Although you park this bike next to any litre sports bike, and it makes the litre sports bike look like a toy. It's quite a big standing bike. It's got presence without going big. Boxer engine presence, you know what I mean? If you're looking for a general adventure, dual purpose sort of bike, multi purpose in fact, it's like a German army knife. The looks are okay, it's grown on me a bit since I've got it, since I did the crash bars and even this screen. I just think it looks a little bit better. Although I actually liked the other screen that was on it as well. Even adding the top box makes it look a bit more adventury. <laughs> but, uh, even ride, riding with it loaded up with camping gear and all that luggage sort of stuff. I did feel the weight a bit more on it, but you would. And again, still perfectly manageable without being ridiculously heavy could I pick it up myself if I dropped it? yeah I think I could but I don't plan to lift this up I plan to keep it nice and shiny and rubber side down because I'm keeping this for a wee while yet I had to spend a bit more to get this and I also traded in my two previous bikes for this but all in all I'm certainly very very content with this at the minute and then if I didn't say already that's like half the price of a brand new one with all the spec full spec this has got everything on it every extra really apart from BMW luggage but stuff even like the TFT monitor went standard it was an extra heated grips dynamic pro, that's the riding modes but all in all a fantastic motorcycle so if you're looking for one of these or something similar definitely worth a look at these the seating position on them as well is really comfortable 
and I found that with no matter what height people are, they seem to find it very comfortable. I'm five foot seven and a half, around 13 stones, and I find it comfortable, manageable, and really pretty awesome, if I'm honest. So here's a few quick tips. If you're looking to buy one of these, if the bike you're looking at's got one of these, it means it's got dynamic ESA. Also noticeable from this side. This is part of the dynamic ESA as well. Which is also noticeable from this switch on the steering. Also, if it's got this, it means it's got cruise control. If it's got this switch here, it means it's got additional front lights. What else? If it's got this switch here, it means it's got heated grips. This is just for the rider modes, which I think they've all got. And finally, if it's got this little contraption here on the gear shift, it means it's got a quick shifter and blipper. So I hope they were helpful tips. But you'll learn to know just from at a glance. You'll be flicking through pictures on Auto Trader or whatever. And you'll see, oh look, this has got a TFT monitor. Whereas some of them have got the part digital, part analog with needle fascia on it. So there. Take care. Peace out. Cheers for watching. Adios.